that I've talked your ear off, let's bring out Jenna Ozels. <laughs> Many people <laughs> will casually ask themselves the question like this every single morning. I don't know about you, but I was asking myself this question all day today. A lot of people will say, oh, he's crazy or he's mentally ill. And, and the problem with that, not only is that super problematic for people who actually have mental illnesses, but the thing is, I have had a revelation. The way that the townspeople in Beauty and the Beast fawn over a guy like Gaston is the exact same reason why they fawn over Donald Trump. It's toxic masculinity and our culture's support of these types of ideals. Now, of course, this is not saying that being a man is bad, and this is, I'm not gonna talk at you for the next five minutes about how sexism defined the election, even though it totally did, but... <laughs> When I say toxic masculinity, I mean things that we ourselves do, like telling our sons that they can't wear skirts or nail polish or things like that and telling them to man up when they cry. You know what that kind of stuff does? It turns us into the kind of people who would elect a man like this. That's what it does. So to men like Gaston and Donald Trump, everything is about power. Everything is about admiration, it's about pride. Now, Gaston does this via how big and strong he is and how much he's a hunter and he provides things. Trump, not necessarily a physical specimen that we're gonna be lusting after necessarily, but he does try and use this. He's, he's very concerned that you know that his hair is real and that his hands are not too small. He really wants you to know that. But where it, that kind of stuff becomes toxic for Gaston is antlers in all of his decorating. Donald Trump uses the American culture of admiration for rich people to do basically exactly the same thing. We admire these traits. Now, we know the man has a complicated relationship with women. That's, that is a one way to put it. But Donald Trump is the kind of guy that treats women as trophies for him, for him to bolster himself up. And how do we know this? Well, the type of guy like Caston says, she's the most beautiful girl in town, and that makes her the best. Donald Trump runs a beauty pageant, so if you want to fight me on that one, we can talk outside, but that's the same thing right there. Now, both of these two have a real problem with consent. Gaston shows up to Belle's house with a wedding party already planned, and, you know, Donald Trump brags about assaulting women. Neither of them are ever more upset or erratic than if they have been humiliated by a girl. Neither of them can handle that. Now, even the filmmakers recognized this when they were making the new movie. In 1991, this scene includes the villagers just kind of singing the chorus. In the new movie, they responded by Gaston singing, call it war, call it threat, you can bet they all will follow, for in times like this they'll do just as I say. Well, what did that do? That turned our friends and neighbors into a screaming mob. Where else have we seen that kind of thing that Gaston can make the villagers do? Now, hey, you know what? Nobody asked my opinion on updates to lyrics for the new movie, but I would go with this one that admittedly a friend sent me. No one's droll like Gaston. No one trolls like Gaston. No one fits his assigned gender role like Gaston. <laughs> He's especially fond of the patriarchy. I could go on for hours describing the similarities between the two of them, and I probably wouldn't be able to cover it. The thing is, Beauty and the Beast is ultimately a story about transformation. It is about, re it is about returning those types of negative um, traits that toxic masculinity treats people, it's about turning them away. The beast is so much more tolerable, though still, of course, very problematic. There's the whole Stockholm Syndrome thing, but I don't have time. There, he is so much more tolerable because he has recognized at least a vast majority of these things, and he has decided to call it out. What I ask of each person in this room is to never tell your sons to man up. 
it is to never tell them that any emotion that is not anger is okay, because guess what? We cannot march our way out of the repercussions of 2016. If we want to make America dope again, then we need to be counting on this kind of behavior in our own lives and saying it's not okay. Thank you.